On the left, the vibrating spring demonstrates distinct pattern, each corresponding to specific frequency. This pattern behavior is similar to the phenomenon of the shaft vibrating in rotating machine. The first natural frequency of the shaft produces a single loop. The second natural frequency generates two loops. The third natural frequency forms three loops. The fourth natural frequency results in four loops. These fundamental frequencies, also known as mode shapes, are potential source of vibration and must be carefully identified. This is a model of aircraft in wind turbine exhibiting flutter, a phenomenon where vibrations are amplified due to aeroelastic interactions. The vibration pattern shown here is referred to as the mode shape. Understanding these interactions, such as influence of the wind and airflow on structures, is crucial for analyzing and mitigating flutter or mode shape in machine design. The below example also illustrates the vibration mode shape of multiple rotors connected together through coupling. So resonance occurs when a forcing frequency matches or is closer to the natural frequency of the machine structure, resulting in excessive vibration. In rotating machinery, the shaft natural frequency can induce resonance when operating near its critical speeds. So the rotor dynamic analysis can be used to predict these mode shapes combined with bearing stiffness. And more detailed analysis is covered in part 4 video. So what factors influence the natural frequency of the shaft in rotating machines? The natural frequency is primarily determined by the shaft geometry. As seen in the equation on the right, increasing shaft stiffness can be achieved by reducing its length or increasing its diameter. These changes enhance the shaft ability to resist deformation, therefore raising its natural frequency. These mode shapes can be experimentally confirmed through impact testing. Alright, here I will give you a more detailed example of how to perform an impact test for a simple rotor shown in this slide. Schematics of test setup is shown here. Two accelerometers are connected to the signal conditioner and then they are routed to the dynamic signal analyzer. First thing you need to do is to mark the rotor equally spaced. So let's mark every 1.5 inches equally spaced along its entire length. Now attach two accelerometers on the rotor. As the name indicates that the stationary accelerometer will stay at its location, while the roaming accelerometer will move around during the impact test. Once all the equipment is ready, impact on the rotor so that two accelerometers get the signal. Impact. Once the signal is recorded in the data acquisition, record the AR, AS, and the phase angle between the accelerometers at each natural frequency. Once you record all the data in your Excel sheet, move your roaming accelerometer to the next interval location and then repeat the impact test. Impact. Then record data. So the process looks like this. Move the roaming accelerometer to the next location. Impact the rotor. Record the data. Move the roaming accelerometer to the next location. Then repeat this process until you measure all the data through the whole rotor. If you have recorded the data at each natural frequency, the data would look like this. This data set is for the first natural frequency of 196 hertz, with data recorded at each interval. Now, if you multiply all the recorded data, you will get the mode shape amplitude. If you plot this amplitude versus the intervals, you will get the mode shape for the first natural frequency at 196 hertz. Same logic applies for second natural frequency at 396 hertz. If you plot this amplitude versus the interval, you will get the mode shape for the second natural frequency at 396 hertz. Now let's compare the impact test result to the rotor dynamic model. To do so, you need to model the rotor geometry into the finite element tool as shown below and then run the analysis. Here are the natural frequency and the mode shape result from the impact test and prediction from the rotor dynamic model. 
both natural frequencies and mode shapes are very similar to each other, which indicates that the rotor dynamic model represent well the reality. This means that we could use the rotor dynamic model to predict the rotor responses with high confidence. In other words, the predicted results have a high chance of representing what will happen in real machine. So let's talk more about how your model applies to predicting the rotor dynamic responses. I'll give you an example here. Say this rotor is installed in a test bench with elliptical journal bearings installed at each end. If you know the detailed geometry of the bearing, you could predict the stiffness and damping characteristics of the bearing using the commercial software. Here is the predicted bearing stiffness and damping versus the rotor speed. Then you feed the bearing stiffness and damping information back into your rotor dynamic model. Now you could predict the critical speed and the threshold speed of instability. Then you run coast up and coast down experiments and experimentally obtain where the critical speed is and when the instability occurs at what speed. If your rotor dynamic model is well modeled, it gives ample information and can give you early warning related to when the failure could occur. And the impact test helps you to increase the confidence of your model. All right, this is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.